Welcome to another episode of Vintage to Muscle. Today we have, this is a very unique car. Uh, most people probably have never even seen a car like this. This is a 1954 Nash Healey. Uh, they were only made from 1951 to 1954. They were, in their day, they were the, actually the first post-war sports car. Everybody tries to think it's the Corvette, it is not. This was the first post-war sports car. These things sold for a whopping $6,000 when they were new, and Nash was actually losing $9,000 each car because their production numbers were so low, they just couldn't scale it to make any money. And if you equivalent to what that was, that would be like spending $60,000 today. The engine size, I think it's only around a 250 inch cubic inch engine and it produces 140 horsepower, but the average speed was 90 miles an hour. And this person that owns this is the original owner. Her father owned it and now she has it. And she remembers being scared to death going 100 miles an hour in this car with her father. And fortunately, they saved it uh, and, uh, and enlisted us to bring it back to life. And we have been working on it for probably about a year now. And we're towards the uh, end of this restoration. They only made 90 and they generally figure a survival rate of about 10% is a problem with a car like this being such low production uh, is getting parts and research. That is horrific, trying to find information out on it. But uh, Jim can tell you some of the things that he ran into and some of the components and uh, what we did on this uh, unique car. This car has dual Carter side draft carburation. It also has an electronic overdrive system. That's a three speed manual on the floor and has an electronic overdrive system that to, to wire from scratch and get all the components working correctly is a major undertaking. It has been tested, it is working as it's supposed to, but it's, uh, believe me, not an easy job to get all these parts to work in unison with each other. And Jim, don't forget to go over this very crappy exhaust system that they used in the day where we're actually, oh, yes. there actually isn't an exhaust manifold that you're used to. It was a terrible design. Uh, I don't know how long they kept it for. Not too many years after this. This might have been actually the last year for this style before they actually went to an exhaust manifold. But it's just a piece of tubing with the, the ports cut out from the back side and a, a gasket wrapping a perimeter of the hole and then it bolts up with. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've seen any other car manufacturer that ever used the system. Probably yeah. because it was so bad once, you know, right. they, they, it was terrible and, and uh, that's probably why. I don't know what, I don't really know what the thinking was at the time uh, yeah. when they uh, came, tried to do this. It probably, it probably saved a whole lot of steps, but it was just, there's, it was just terrible because there's, there's not enough strength there in the pipe and it's flexing and it's just, not I good. think the, the only other one that, the only other motor that I can recall that had this was the L-head for the uh, Nash Rambler. Yeah, well, the okay. L-head motor. S still a Nash product. Still, so, oh yeah. So, so nobody yeah. stole this great idea right. from, from Nash. Yeah, you're, you're not getting this out without taking the radiator out and everything in the front of the motor. It's quite the job. As you could see, the dash and instrument layout in this car is fairly basic. The two small gauges in the center of the dashboard are not factory. Those were added by the owner's father. And she asked us to leave them in there, even though they're not correct for the vehicle, but it has sentimental value to her. This horn assembly on the wheel must have about 20 to 30 different components in it. It was a ton of work to get this to work properly mm -hmm. and the overdrive button that's mounted into the center of the horn ring yep. all has to work as it should. That's it for this week from Vintage to Muscle Cars. 
Come back next week when we will be running this car and seeing how it performs to the original 90 miles an hour average.